What's up guys, my name is Nick and welcome to my channel. Today we're looking at a defined risk strategy, the Iron Butterfly or Iron Fly. Now this strategy shares many similar characteristics to the short straddle strategy, but has defined risk so it's more suitable for smaller accounts. Before we get into the video though, do me a favor, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, it helps me out a ton. I'll see you on the other side. In order to take advantage of the passage of time or what is known as theta decay, we could look at selling an at-the-money call and an at-the-money put option. This trade, which is referred to as a short straddle, is initially at least price neutral. We would hope that over the course of the trade up until the expiration date, that while the stock might drift higher or lower, it ultimately remains close to the short strike of the options. If the stock were to actually pin the strike, both options would expire worthless, and as the option seller, we'd pocket the full premium for which we sold the options initially. The problem with this trade is that naked options come with theoretically unlimited risk and as a result have a very high capital requirement. In order to reduce this risk and set up a trade that would work in a smaller account, we can also purchase an out of the money call and an out of the money put. This allows the trader to benefit from the passage of time and the theta decay, but also limit the risk associated with the position. Altogether, the four individual legs of this trade are collectively referred to as an iron butterfly or iron fly. Let's take a look at a specific example. This is an options chain for ABC stock. Let's assume that these options have approximately 30 days to go to expiration. ABC stock is currently trading at $100 a share. We can sell the 100 strike call and put for $4 each and receive a net credit of $8 with the hope that the stock remains at or close to the strike by expiration. This trade there has theoretically unlimited risk since the options are naked. Let's buy the 105 call then for a 250 debit and on the downside the 95 put for the same price. Now we have defined our risk, let's take a look at two potential outcomes depending on the stock's performance prior to the expiration date. In our first example, let's suppose that the stock trades a little higher, trades a little lower, but ultimately never really moves very far away from the $100 strike by expiration. Specifically, the stock trades at $99 per share by the expiration date. Again, recall our iron fly is constructed by simultaneously selling the 100 strike call and put, but also buying the 105 call and the 95 put. Despite the fact that this trade has four individual option legs, most brokers will allow you to enter the position as a single transaction. Okay, so at expiration, you can see that both the calls are out of the money. They are both struck hard in the current stock price, and so expire worthless with no value. Since we sold the 100 call for four, we pocket a nice $400 in premium but we also lose money on the 105 call we bought. We paid $2.50 or $250 a contract for that option, so the net profit on the calls is $150. On the put side, the 95 put is also out of the money and results in a $250 loss as it expires worthless. With the stock at $99, the 100 put is $1 in the money and so it's worth $100 at expiration. Despite this, since we sold the put at $4 a contract, we collect an additional $300 in profit. We can sum all these profits and losses together and see that our total net profit is $200, a very nice one month return on capital. Don't think of the loss on the bought long options as a bad thing. We purchased these options as protection and fortunately in this case we didn't need them. Think of it as insurance. You have to have insurance for your car, but you don't hope to be in an accident so you get to cash in that insurance policy, right? And the long options are there for the same reason, to protect you against a worst case scenario. Talking of which, let's take a look at an example that doesn't work out so well. How much can we possibly lose on the trade? Let's say the stock rallies and moves away from the short 100 strike and ends up at $107 per share. Both the long put and the short put are struck below the stock price, so both of these options are worthless at expiration. We make $400 from selling the 100 strike but lose $250 on the purchase of the 95 put. The calls, on the other hand, are both in the money. So, how much is each worth? Well, the 105 call is $2 in the money, and so it's worth $2. Since we bought the option for $2.50, the loss in the position is the difference. It's $50 per contract. The $100 call we sold is $7 in the money. Since we sold this for $4, the difference or net loss on the position is $300. The net loss then from each of the four individual legs is $200. Here's an important point though. The strategy makes the maximum loss when the stock price closes outside of either the long call or put option strike. 
This is the maximum the position can ever lose. Regardless of whether the stock goes to $120, $150 or zero, it really doesn't matter. The maximum loss is capped and is calculated by taking the difference between the long and short strikes, in this example for the call side of the spread 105 minus 100, or alternatively on the put side 100 minus 95 or $5, and the net credit that the spread was initially sold, in this case $300. The maximum loss then is $2 or $200 per contract. Let's take a look at the payoff profile at expiration. On the x-axis we can see the price of the stock. This increases as we move from left to right. On the y-axis we have the profit or loss in the position. And note below the x-axis the trade loses money and above the x-axis the trade makes a profit. But how much and where are the break-evens? Well, the maximum profit is the price that we sell the iron butterfly for or the net credit that we receive when we open the position. In this trade, that's $3 or $300 per contract. The maximum loss occurs when the stock closes outside either of the long options at expiration. That loss is equal to the difference between the long and short strikes less the net credit received for opening the position. In this example, that's $2 or $200 per contract, which is also the capital requirement to place the trade with your broker. This trade has two different break-even levels. These are found by taking the short strike and adding the net premium, so $100 plus $3 or $103, and taking the short strike and subtracting the net premium, so $100 minus $3 or $97 per share. If we look at the risk reward, we can see that we risk two to potentially make three, but that's only part of the story. It's important to understand the probability or likelihood that the trade is profitable. A position like this typically has less than a 50% probability of being profitable. This is because to gain the maximum profit, the stock has to pin exactly at $100 a share by expiration. Note that the overall profit zone is relatively steep and narrow. Why do long wing strikes, so buying cheaper, further out of the money options, can help improve the odds of success, but of course in doing so, so the maximum potential loss relative to the credit received increases too. Let's take a look at that when we set up a position. Okay, so we're inside my Toastyworks uh, trading platform now. What you're looking at is an options chain uh, for SPY, which is the S&P 500 ETF. Uh, the expiry date of the options is November 6th, uh, which have 31 days to go as I'm making this recording. Uh, last night's closing price on SPY uh, was at 3.34.93. So let's take a look at setting up a short straddle based upon the 335 option strike. Okay, on the left hand side we've got the calls, so in order to add the wings we could buy the 340 call there, excuse me, and the 330 put on the downside. So what we've created then is an iron fly on SPY with $5 wings. Now let's take a look at some of the, uh, the analytics for this position. The first thing to note is the very low probability of profit. SPY is a relatively expensive stock and trades in a wide range, so these wings would be considered extremely tight. We can see that the position generates a credit of $4.69, which means that there's a maximum profit of $469. Since the wings are $5 wide, uh, we can use this to, to calculate the maximum loss, which in this case is $31. Remember, it's the difference between the $5 wings and the credit received. Now let's see what happens when we make these wings just a little bit wider. So, okay, let's move down the put strike from 330 to 325. So those would be $10 wings. And the same on the call side, the 340s up to 345. Okay, so now what we can see is the probability of profit of this trade has now increased. It's 23%. Uh, the wings are now $10 wide and the credit received for the trade is $8.64. So the maximum profit now is 864 and the maximum loss is minus $136. Let's just do one more with very, very wide spreads. Let's go all the way out and look as far perhaps as even $50 wings. So we'll be 385 on the upside here. We're getting very cheap. These are just uh, cents here now. 10 cents at 14 cents for the 385 strike. And on the put side, okie doke. So now, we have $50 wide wings. We receive a total credit of $20.03, which means we have a maximum profit of 
and a maximum loss now of up to $2,997. But the probability of profit, as you see, is just slightly over 50%. The width of the wings that we select then can be used to change the probability of profit and the relative size of the maximum profit when compared to the maximum loss. Cheers, guys. Guys, if you made it this far, you made it to the end and your support is very, very much appreciated. Again, please do me a small favor, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel. It helps me out a ton. Until the next one, take it easy. Cheers. Thank you for visiting the Option Alchemist YouTube channel. If you enjoyed the content in this video, you can subscribe to the channel here and watch similar content in another video here. Until the next one, guys, take care. Cheers.